Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at accounting for treasury stock using the par value method. Now why I'm emphasizing the word par value method is because we do have another method called the cost method. There are more than one way to account for treasury stock either the par value or the cost value. In this session we will focus on the par value. I will explain what is the par value method. I will show you an example for par value method and at the end I will retire the stock using the par value method. But I will start by ref uh, explaining treasury stock. What is treasury stock? It refers to shares a company issued to investors and later buy back from them. So when the company first start the company will do what? Well company will issue stocks to investors and in return they get money from investors. At some point the company might have lots of money because of profit. What they would do they will give back the money and they will buy back their own stock and that's simply what treasury stock is. These shares or these stocks are issued but no longer outstanding. So we, we will take them out of the outstanding shares. They no longer have voting rights and they no longer receive dividends. So once you buy back those shares, basically you don't pay yourself. Basically, if you pay them dividend, it's like taking your money from one pocket and putting your money into another pocket. It's your money. You're just transferring the money from one pocket to the other. So the company don't pay them dividend. And obviously, not obviously, the company don't vote because the voting represent the shareholder and the company cannot vote for itself. So these shares, they sit on the company's book, but don't count in the total shares held outside by investors, which is outstanding shares. Now we will see in this example, at the end of the day, we can retire those shares if the company chooses to do so. So first what we will do is we briefly discuss why would a company buy its own stock back. Then we will work a comprehensive example, including the retirement of par value treasury stock. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our intermediate accounting course is best for online students and students who are taking intermediate accounting courses. Our course covers all the essentials from the financial statements, time value of money, inventory, property, plant and equipment, investments, derivatives, pension, equity, earnings per share, and of course, the statement of cash flows. Our course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as exercises. Go ahead and start your free trial today. We are here to help. Your success starts here. So why would a company buy its own stock? Well, there are many reasons. I'm going to cover a couple reasons, but bear in mind there are many. One is to show, to show confidence in the company. Management signals that they believe the price is low and their business is strong. How? I'll give you a case in point, Apple computers. Apple computers, what they do, once they see Apple stock is not going up and they have a lot of cash on hand, what they do to show that management, to show that the company believe that Apple stock should go higher, they take billions of dollars with a B and they buy back their stock. As a result, the stock price, they will drive the stock price up. Why? What management is saying, I believe in my own performance. I believe in my own company. And if you don't give me that market share reward, I'm going to reward myself with my own money. And I'm taking risk on myself. Buying your own stock when management or when the board decides to do that, it's they're taking risk on themselves. Because now they're going to use those shares. Uh, they got rid of the money and they have the shares. There's nothing they can do with the shares. They just basically spend that money and that's a risky business sometimes the company could buy back its own share and the stock price could drop a case in point the new york times at some point they bought back their own shares and the stock crashed simply put they lost money by thinking they're making a good investment another way another reason why you will buy back your own shares is to reward shareholders i just told you Apple, they buy back their own shares, the, st the stock price goes up. One way, they show their confidence in the company. Another reason they do so is to reward the shareholders. Fewer shares mean higher earnings per share, which can lift the stock price. And they bid the price up because 
they're buying, they're creating demand for the stock. So people who are holding the share, their stock price goes up. So that's why they buy stocks. There are other reasons. I'm just naming two. When I discussed the cost method, I went a little bit more into depth. Now remember, if the company buys another company's stocks, that's called an investment. So when is it called a treasury stock? It's when you buy back your own shares. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you an overview, the difference between how to account for treasury stock using the cost method and how to prepare accounting for par value method. I'm going to show you side by side, then I will go over an example. So this is the cost method and this is the par value method. Amount at, at which treasury stock is initially recorded. Well, if we're using the cost method, we, we, I showed you that it's purchased per share and the cost of the share will become the base for the treasury stock. So at which cost do we record it? At cost, how much we paid for that. When it comes to the par value method, you will see under the par value method, we would record the treasury stock at par. We'll work an example. When is gain slash loss measured? And I'm going to put gain and loss in in parentheses because there's no gain, no loss, and you will see that. On the reissuance, when the company reissued those treasury stock under the cost method, they would record any, in quote, gains and losses. So when? When resold. Under the par value method, when do you recognize any, in quote, gain or loss? When you purchase the stock, when you buy back the stock. And we're going to see an example because we already finished the cost method. Which one is most commonly used in practice? The cost method. Which one is used in college courses? The cost method. However, if you're studying for the CPA exam, you could see the par value method. What's the effect on the income statement? None. None. None for both. Why? Because under both method, you are dealing with owners. Transaction with owners do not affect the income statement. Although I say here, gains and losses, I put gains and losses in parentheses and you're going to, in quotes, and you're going to see why. You cannot book a gain or a loss from buying and selling your own stock. So when a company buys back and sells back its own stocks, any gain or loss is not reported as income or an expense or a loss. Instead, these differences adjust equity accounts. We saw on the cost method, we're going to see under the par value method. So I might use terms like gain or loss but remember in quotes because they don't refer to profit or losses on the official income statement so when I say the company incurred the gain it means they bought they sold the stocks more than then what they bought it for that's a gain but you cannot record it as a gain on the income statement so let me show you the steps for the power value before we dive into an example well under the power value method treasury stock is recorded at the share par value no matter what price the companies pay the par value is the face amount that's set when the company issued the stock that's often a dollar or less but in our example it's going to be a few dollars so we're going to show you the example so that's what we debit then we credit cash for the actual amount paid to repurchase the shares treasury stock is a contra equity account it reduces stockholders equity so treasury stock what type of an account it's a contra equity when you debit you're increasing treasury stock. When you credit treasury stock, you are reducing treasury stock because it's counter equity. So we're going to debit treasury stock, credit cash when we buy it, and the difference will be either a gain or a loss and we'll take care of paid in capital. The best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. And I'm going to start by issuing stocks, then buying back the stock. So now the company issued 5,000 shares, $5 par value. So this is the par value for $8. This is not a treasury stock. This is issuing stocks. If the company sold or issued 5,000 shares at $8, they would receive in cash $40,000. They will credit common stock 5,000 shares times the par value. Hopefully you know this. And anything left is additional paid in capital, which is the plug figure or what we need to balance. What we did now, we issued. The company sold the stock and they received $40,000 in cash to operate the business. At some point down the road, the company decides to repurchase 400 shares at $10. Let me go back and show you. We sold them at eight. We're, buy them, we're buying something back at 10. What does that mean? It means when we, we get $8, 
when we sold them now we're buying we're buying them back at 10 what, what does that mean it what should you do now whether you are a student CPA exam candidate CMA go to farhatlectures.com where you have additional resources lectures multiple choice exercises that will help you invest in yourself that's the best investment you can make good luck study hard and stay safe